We've been looking forward to this rain all week. I don't think this was enough of a challenge before having these roads be washed out. I think we need to not have any brakes and then try to drive home. <laughs> challenge accepted. Welcome back to our work camping adventure. I'm Jill, my partner is Charles, and we live in a 25-foot fiberglass RV. We're spending the winter volunteering at Kofa Wildlife Refuge in Arizona. From here, it takes less than an hour to drive to California, and we're so close to Mexico that there's a border patrol checkpoint between our campsite on the refuge and the office in Yuma. We spent our first two weeks out here getting to know the landscape and coming to understand what it means to have an annual rainfall of four to eight inches and just how much every form of life out here depends on a few winter rainstorms to make it to the next summer monsoon season. Good morning, I hope you can hear the rain on the camper. We've been looking forward to this rain all week and we're hoping to get enough to green up the desert and maybe bring out some plants and animals that we haven't seen yet. Southwestern Arizona is a particularly dry part of the Sonoran Desert and the rains here come only in the winter and during the summer monsoon season. So if we don't get rains in the winter, then that's a real problem for keeping wildlife alive around here. A big theme of our work camping position and some of our future videos here will be the wildlife drinking stations, which are required to keep larger animals from overheating and dying of thirst. Oh my goodness, I'm being photobombed by an eating cat. We've been getting to know the wildlife drinking stations. Part of our responsibility is to make sure those are operational and Charles will be working on some special projects with those in the future. The wildlife drinking stations all depend ultimately on rains like this one to increase the water table for the wells and also to fill the washes, which are in many cases dammed to create pockets that hold water longer for the wildlife. Good morning. We slept in until eight today. It's the day after the big rainstorm. We thought that we might have an easy day of letting the roads dry out a bit and maybe go check a rain gauge or two if the roads were clear. But we had a message on our phone saying, please go check the pronghorn pen, make sure the fence doesn't have any damage from the rains and feed them a bale of hay so we are going to go on out and hope that we can get through. We've already learned that it takes a long time to get pretty much anywhere on the refuge. We're the first one through it. <laughs> Not just because it covers a thousand square miles, but also because the primary roads are slow and the secondary roads require a four-wheel drive with extra ground clearance, even on a good day. But the pronghorn pen is a really important piece of infrastructure. It gives the next generation a head start before their release into the wild, and it does that by keeping the breeding animals in and their predators out. So checking it after a heavy rainstorm is a huge priority. The first thing we'll do when we get there is check the rain gauge. It's reading two and a quarter inches, which is about twice what was forecast. What's the story, Charles? There's definitely faults. 
We're at 1.8 kilovolts. We need to drive the fence to look for holes first. Can't we do both at once? We can look for faults on the on the electric fence, but we may not see them just driving by. Well, we made it out here to the pronghorn pen. There are some places where the electric fence is hung up in some of the debris that came through the washes last night. Let's suppose you turned off the fence. I voted to turn off the fence so we could clear it and then come back and check it. But Charles would like to leave the fence on so he can check it with the meter as he goes. So he'll be the one messing with the stuff on the hot fence. I'm gonna have to turn the fence off to fix it. It's definitely, it's actually broken. So I'll need to get a pair of pliers and fix it back. We haven't got very far along the fence, but this is the second problem area where we see holes. Actually, the first one where we've seen a true hole underneath. I think we just need to put the rocks back on it, on the chicken wire that keeps out predators. There is also a bunch of brush tangled up in the outer fence down here that needs to be removed. We'll get that on the way back after we turn off the fence. I'm going to be honest here and admit that I was getting pretty frustrated at not being able to make myself useful in this situation. Hole number four. So I volunteered to take care of the animal end of the job, which seems appropriate since I'm the biologist and Charles is the electrical engineer. Okay, I've asked Charles to drop me off so I can feed the animals and he's going to go off and fix the fence. We don't have a cell signal most places out here, so after I was done feeding, I started walking the fence in hopes that I would catch Charles working his way around it. I did find him, and the fence was still turned off, so I helped him bury a few more sections of chicken wire off camera. Well, we got the fence fixed after four and a half hours, and the pronghorn are fed. So we came down to check one more rain gauge and we also found that the catchment system for the drinker at this location is a bit clogged by debris, so we'll take care of that before we head home for the evening. What's going on, Charles? We're losing our brakes. The brake line has been roading on the inside of the tire. I don't think this was enough of a challenge before having these roads be washed out. I think we need to not have any brakes and then try to drive home. <laughs> Challenge accepted. I verified where the e-brake is and that it works so we can slow down in an emergency. Sorry, I know the truck is a little bit loud, but we need to talk a little bit about how crazy this day has been. <laughs> now that we know the brake line is empty of fluid, our job is to get home in one piece. The time now is 5 p.m. We have about another hour before we get back to our campsite, and then we have to go to the pronghorn pen tomorrow morning, which is Sunday and Christmas Eve, which is why we need a new brake line so urgently. Oh dear. Okay, we 
have a new plan. We called in and it turns out we can switch this truck out for another one, but we're not going to dare to drive it into the city. We're going to bring it back to the campsite, bring our personal vehicle to the city, and bring the other truck home tonight. So it's going to be a very long day. Yes. <laughs> Okay, we have our key. We're going to grab another truck and get out of here. If you can see that water on top of the truck, that is dew. It felt more like Vermont this morning than Arizona. So the rain two days ago has saturated the landscape so much that not only did we have dew this morning, but also a dense fog advisory. And we were so busy yesterday that we didn't have a chance to fill our freshwater tank. So we're going to get a late start this morning, but today is the day that we were scheduled to take care of the pronghorn. So that's what we'll be doing next. And then if we are able, we will check a few more rain gauges, which sounds simple, but we'll see. It may seem like we are the new ranch hands around here, but actually it's kind of a special event that we're taking shifts on the pronghorn pen checking the fence and getting them fed. And the reason that we're worked into the schedule is actually because it's Christmas week and they're a little bit short-handed. I'm Kira. I'm the biological technician intern at Kofa Refuge for Student Conservation Association. And the carts suck. <laughs> I also agree with her assessment. These are heavy ass bales. Where to next, Charles? Gonna go check a couple more rain gauges. Two and a quarter. This big rain may have made a mess of the roads around here, but it sure came through for the plants and animals that depend on it. That's brimming full. We were promised that the plants would green up quickly after the rain. This is two days after the rain, and this ocotillo 
is fully leafed out. The ones I had seen before looked half dead. Some of them maybe. We hope you've enjoyed coming along on this wild ride with us, and we'd love to answer your questions about our work camping experience in future videos. So we'll start collecting those if you'll go ahead and put them in the comments. See you in a few weeks! Bye.